Hello and welcome back to the Black Mountains in Wales. I came here for a camp last month and it was absolutely freezing and it looks like it's not going to be a very different story today. It might be cold but it's a stunning day here and it's only going to get colder tonight with the feels like temperature set to drop to about minus 12 celsius with the wind chill and the air temperature is meant to be a max of about minus 6 celsius I think. So it's going to be important to keep warm tonight and to help me do that I picked up a new piece of kit just this morning on my way out today and I've also brought a bit more warm clothing just to hold in any of that body heat so I can make it through the night in comfort. My loose plan for today is to walk from the Minnith D car park where I've left my car up past Grinevour Reservoir and then I plan to camp on top of Weinvac tonight which is the highest mountain in the Black Mountains range and it's hopefully not going to be too wild up there tonight. Anyway, let's get crunching some of these miles and I'll pick you up again along the way. miles into my walk now and I've just made it to Guinevar Reservoir. It's a really different day to the last time I was here last month and uh, I don't know it's a similar temperature maybe I think we're hovering around about two or three degrees and I just came across the fierce guardians of the dam wall there. I thought they were going to put up a fight and prevent me access but uh, I managed to fight them off. So as you can see the sun is still out it's a glorious day. I'll just show you over the dam wall now as I always do. and down the valley there as well and the patch of woodland you can just see there is where Minnith D car park is which is where I parked. The, uh, the snow has changed texture a bit here now it's definitely getting colder as you might have been able to tell from those shots watching my feet it was quite slushy soft snow a little bit further down the valley but we're up to about 600 meters here and the snow is definitely a bit more crunchy and hopefully that means that all of the streams running across the track will start to freeze as I climb up so I won't get wet feet quite so much. The eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed something new on my pack today. That is a Van Gogh Thermotrek closed cell foam sleeping mat. So when I looked at the forecast yesterday I could see it was going to be really sunny here in the Black Mountains but with that sunshine came some really low temperatures. The temperature including the wind chill was anywhere between minus 18 and about minus 10. Uh, from the morning today through till the morning tomorrow and I thought I could do with a helping hand against those temperatures. The temperature didn't put me off, I'm actually quite keen to, to challenge myself a bit more in colder temperatures than I've camped in before and the last time I camped here I was actually at the far end of this valley so if you follow the reservoir up there's a ridge up there and that's where I camped just last month. Uh, temperatures dropped to minus 11 I think um, with the wind chill and I did stay warm enough but I thought I could do with a helping hand this time so I got online yesterday morning, ordered this camp mat, the, uh, the Van Gogh Thermotrek from Taunton Leisure uh, and I went and picked that up this morning on my way here and I really hope that's going to help me out. This new foam mat should boost the R value of my sleep system. So the R value is basically a rating that tells you how well your sleep mat insulates you from the cold ground. So my Thermares Neoa X them has now a value of 6.4 I think um, and this new mat has an additional R value of 1.5 so that's a 25% increase in the R value of my sleep system and I really hope I'm going to notice that difference. So for the sake of £24 it weighs 210 grams and a nice convenient pickup today I thought I'll give that a go I've been meaning to buy one for about a year or so. That's enough chat as I say I'm only two miles into this walk it's about six miles up to the top if I stick to my shorter route so I'll keep on crunching those miles and I'll see you along the way.
it's quarter past three now. Sunset is around about six o'clock. So I think I'll get up there around about half past four, which will give me a good amount of time to get the tent pitched once I've found somewhere to put the tent, which might be a bit challenging today. And uh, then I'll hopefully get some food cooking before the sun goes down. I was just watching all the ponies over here all pouring away at the ground to get through to the grass below so they can find something to eat. Uh, and the snow is quite deep here. I'm going in up to about halfway up my calves in some of the deeper bits. And because it's completely untouched snow, I can't see any other human footprints here. It's just a mystery really what happens when you put your foot down each time. So it's a case of trying to pick out the high spots. You can see the sort of slightly raised ridges here. So I'm just trying to walk on those where I can, but every now and then you fall in about a foot deep of snow. Uh, it's just the way it is. So it's not very fast going in these ground conditions, which is why I think it's a good idea to go for a slightly shorter route rather than trying to add another three miles on with a whole load of climbing, slippy and sliding all over the place and also ending up at my destination a little bit late. It'd be quite nice to have daylight to pitch and enjoy the views, which is something I sometimes fail to do. I get myself up there a little bit too late, just wanting not to pitch the tent too early. But after the walk to get up there and the drive to come out and enjoy all of this, it seems a shame to pitch the tent so late that you don't get to take it all in once you've done all the hard work. Behind me down there you can see Grinevar Reservoir and the woods where the car is parked and if I just swing around to the side here I'm going to be walking along this ridge here basically and I don't really mind where I camp. I'm going to be somewhere near the summit of Weinvac but really it's just wherever suits Wherever it looks good, wherever it's flat, level, all of that stuff, I don't really have to pin myself down to any particular location. The cloud is coming in just a little bit over here, over towards the west, but um, over towards the other way, it's still really, really blue. And that blue sky against all the white frozen ground is just stunning. I love all the little grass blades that get completely frozen up and turn into little icicles like this. Hopefully they're coming out on camera. But this really is what I was hoping for, these views. This combination of colour with the blue sky and the white just... I love it. It looked just like this last time I came here. There was lots of freezing fog in the air last time. It was so cold it just killed my drone battery immediately. So this time because it's meant to be a bit colder again, I didn't bring the drone. I, I'm not going to say I regret it because I just don't think it's worth the weight in the bulk to bring the drone up here when I know it's just going to give me error cold battery warnings as soon as I switch it on. But it would be nice to send it up and get a, a good look from the sky today. You can see the Brecon beacons just down here, the central beacons. And I think what I'm looking at down here must be the dragon's back. This is the cairn on top of Penamalthuin, which stands at about 765 metres. So this is wine rack up here as far as I can tell. And I've got about an hour and a half until the sun goes down. I'm just looking down the dragon's back here. 
and you can see Penavan quite well now actually, silhouetted by the sun and it looks magnificent. So I've got one and a half kilometres left to go, starting to get hungry now, let's do it. And we are here, this is the summit of Weinbach at 811 meters. It's taken me 7.4 miles to get here and it's now 10 past five. So as you can see, that sun is just dropping and we've got one hour until it's gone. I did see someone walking up ahead of me, but it looks like he might've carried on. So hopefully this mountain is mine for tonight. So what I need to do now is have a quick look around, decide where I want to put the tent and I think I'd actually like to face that way looking straight over at the Brecon Beacons because, well, it's going to be important to get the tent up nice and quickly because the temperature's already dropping now that the sun's just been veiled over by some clouds. Oh, wow. Okay, it's slippery up here. These shoes have to go and I could do with some micro spikes. Okay, so the path carries on over the shoulder here and you might just about be able to see that other fellow I mentioned and he is on his way. So I'm left with this all to myself. And I'm not complaining at all. People say that Weinbach is unremarkable but has good views and I mean today it does look remarkable with all the snow around, it looks phenomenal but the views I definitely agree with. They are just massive. As you can see, the ground is really bumpy here and the snow is pretty deep. It's also quite hard. So you think you've found a decent space and then as soon as you stand on it, your foot just disappears. And then there's a great big lump next to it as well. Obviously I don't want to be trying to lie down on a great big lump. So I will do my best to find a flat bed. Oh, this doesn't look too bad. This bit in here, it's not level though, that's the problem. It's relatively flat. Can I make this work? That is a pretty good pitch if I dare say so myself. Let's just walk around and be smug about how well the tent's gone in. I'm happy with that, had to kick a few of these big blocks of ice out of the way, but um, the ground was reasonable underneath for getting the pegs in. I'd rather have the ground slightly too hard than slightly too soft. But as you can see, it's nice and taut, 
that is an absolutely astounding view for sunset. I can't believe it. And there's nobody up here. I mean, that's where I get to spend the night. But I don't have time to mess around. I'm just gonna get all my stuff chucked in and I'll give you a quick look at that Van Gogh mat in a sec. So here it is. As I said, it's a Van Gogh Thermatrek. It came with these little elastic straps just to help it stay together. Chuck those in there for now. As you can see, I mean, it's this is very standard for closed cell foam mats these days. Everyone's doing the same thing. This has a, I guess it's an aluminiumized coating. The idea is that this just insulates you a bit better from the ground. And you can see it's got a sort of lumpy bumpy profile. So it folds up nice and flat, but as soon as you open it out, you've actually got quite a bit of thickness there, which is really useful. So this is going to be the length of my mat and just a little bit narrower than the mat, I think. But it weighs absolutely nothing and you can use it just to sit on as well if you want. That can be a, a sit mat. Um, I imagine these little bumps will squash down a bit over time so it'll be a little bit less effective but I'm really keen to give this a go and I think it should make a difference tonight. So here's my Thermarest Neo RX then on top of the Van Gogh foam mat, the Thermatrek and between the two of them these should have a combined R value of I think it's 6.4 for the Thermarest and 1.5 for the Thermatrek so that's 7.9 which is a really high rating and um, I'm just leaving my little flex tail pump to do all the hard work for me, inflating the map while I mess around with GoPro batteries and sort out my other stuff. If you want to buy one of those Flextail Tiny Pump 2Xs for yourself, check the link in my description and there's a 15% discount code down there for you as well if you want to buy one. Here is my Flextail Zero pillow and I've only just discovered that if I pull off the grey rubber nozzle for the Thermarest, that little orange adapter now goes straight into the opening for the pillow. And away you go. That's that. My nice comfy Flextail Zero pillow. Again, if you'd like one of these, link in the description. That same 15% discount code will work for this as well. I'll give you a very quick tour. Breakfast, stove. I have taken the gas canister out of the stove and put it in my coat pocket for now, just to warm the gas up as much as possible. Uh, half a litre of water, going to have to be careful with water on this camp because it will freeze. Uh, hot chocolate, I've got some uh, tomato and herb pasta which I think I will cook in the pasta bolognese bag once I've eaten that. And I've got my all time favourite Wayfarer chocolate pudding. I've got my backpack stowed away down the side here. Really really glad I invested in the, uh, fl the uh, footprint for this tent from Terra Nova. I've got my Rabasent 900 bag, got some gloves in here for very soon because it's very cold and then got spare clothes, waterproof jacket there just to keep the wind off probably and uh, electricals down the end there. That's a lot, quick temperature check, it's minus 1.7 degrees celsius and falling, 1 point, minus 1.8. This is my view for tonight now and because I'm all pitched up in fairly good time tonight actually. Loads of daylight left. I think I'll get my first meal on the go immediately and that'll be my pasta bolognese. I can't believe it. I've just dropped half of my pasta in the snow. <laughs> Let me show you this. This is a disaster. That's enough to make you want to cry, isn't it? But um, I think what I can probably do, because it's just snow, is I can just scoop it all up in the pouch, pour the water in anyway, and it'll be fine. Uh, temperature is now saying minus 6.8 Celsius, if you can see that. So it is cooling down quite rapidly. Um, I think I sorted out that pasta disaster, I cannot believe that. I didn't even know what happened. Something went wrong and I just threw pasta everywhere, but I think I got at least three quarters of it back into the packet. So much for leaving no trace hay, but at least it's just pasta and peas, so it'll just uh, biodegrade, that won't be a problem. 
so my pasta will be ready soon and I'm going to get some more water heated up for my second round of pasta and for my pudding and my hot chocolate. Well, I've eaten all my food now and I'm just heating up one last pot of hot water to go in my drinks bottle there which I'll then put in my sleeping bag to keep me warm. The temperature's warmed up a bit, it's only minus 6.1 now. Uh, the tent is quite frosted up. As you can see, it sounds like that's just about boiling. My feet are absolutely frozen because there's so much snow to walk through on the way here. And a lot of that came over the edges of my walking shoes, so my feet are pretty numb and I've been shivering a little bit as well so I'm really looking forward to drinking my hot chocolate which is made up and waiting in the flask getting into the sleeping bag and getting nice and warm here is my drinking tube which is frozen once again so uh, I don't think I'll be drinking anything from that in the morning but uh, that's where the hot water bottle comes in because that'll stay with me in the sleeping bag overnight and that will still be liquid in the morning so I can make my breakfast with it. I am shivering once again so I'm going to get myself packed up and uh, hopefully we can get a bit of night sky action now and I'll talk to you in the morning. Morning everybody, it's about six o'clock now. I've decided to have a slightly early start today because the weather is looking to turn a little bit worse at 10 o'clock. Um, it was meant to be quite a sunny morning but it looks like it's mainly going to be cloudy now and the snow might be coming in at around about 10 o'clock. So I figured I might as well get myself up and out here in fairly good time. It's only about five and a half miles back to the car, so it shouldn't really take more than a couple of hours. So I think if I can get away from here by around about eight o'clock, I should be able to get back to the car before the weather turns slightly unpleasant. So I've just taken my gas canister out of my sleeping bag to keep that nice and warm, ready to cook and give it some good pressure. And I've also got a bottle of water in here somewhere as well, which has shrunk a bit in the night just because it's cooled down. But um, yeah, I heated that up before I went to bed. That kept me warm. And uh, I had a fairly solid four and a half hours of sleep all in one hit, I think, which is good. And um, I do have some ice left in the bottom of my cook pot here as well. So I should be okay for water today, I think. And if I'm not, I can just gather a little bit of snow and chuck that in the, the cook pot and thaw that out and use it for drinking water and teeth cleaning and that kind of stuff. So let's get this on the go and get that ice thawed. It has warmed up a little bit now. It's around about minus three. It felt like I was lying on quite a warm surface last night, which was really good. I'm in my Rabascent 900 sleeping bag, which is comfort rated to minus 18 Celsius from what I remember. But sleep systems are really personal to each individual. I tend to sleep quite cool. So although this is rated to minus 18 and it didn't get below minus seven last night without the wind chill, uh, it's around about minus 11, minus 12 at the moment with the wind chill factored in, just for information. Um, so last night I had two pairs of thick socks on, two pairs of thermal leggings. I had a long sleeve merino wool base layer, that's a thermal. Uh, I then had a micro fleece hoodie on top of that with the hood up. I then had my Rab Cirrus hoodie with the hood up that's a sort of synthetic insulated jacket. Uh, I then had my decathlon lightweight down jacket on top of that. I then also had my heavyweight mountain equipment light line jacket on top of that with all four hoods up and with my nice thick waterproof beanie hat on as well. I was a good temperature in the night. I did slightly unzip the outer down jacket, but 
to give an idea, that's how much I had to wear last night to keep warm. Other people would have been warm in much less. It really varies person to person. And of course, whatever natural insulation you're already wearing on your body makes a difference as well. So you really just need to get used to these conditions and it helps to be able to record temperatures like on my little thermometer here, just so you get a feel for which equipment you will need based on the current weather conditions or the weather forecast. And that means you can make sure you're well equipped to deal with this sort of harsh environment. My shoes are solidly frozen, so I, I did have to put them on to get the GoPro back out after filming the night sky. Um, and it took quite a lot of force just to ram my foot into that uh, with no socks on, uh, into the shoes. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse from in the night. As you could see, we did have some stars to look at for a while. The moon also rose up nice and high. Uh, a little bit of cloud cover came in, but that's probably why the temperatures have picked up a little bit. So um, it's ever so slightly warmer than it was meant to be. So I'm going to get my breakfast on the go now, have a nice big tub of hot porridge to get me going. And then I'll start getting everything packed up and I'll just make sure I've got enough water to see me through the day. That's everything packed up now and you can see that little rectangle I kicked all the snow and ice off yesterday. Something else I learned from my last camp when I came here to the Black Mountains, it was, I think I said minus 11 yesterday, but I think it was minus 8 last time I was here and um, when I got back to my car my remote key wouldn't work. The battery had been completely killed off by the cold so I had fun and games trying to get into the car after that last one. So this time I slept with my car key in one of my jacket pockets which was held against my body in the sleeping bag. So hopefully I will be okay this time. And that's what this is about really. It's about exposing myself to these more and more challenging conditions and you get different struggles and battles that you have to overcome and learn from. So this time I think really my big learning points have been the, the battery side of things to make sure they survive the cold. Uh, I already knew to keep my gas warm and at least keep some water warm. Okay, I'm going to stop talking, get moving, and I'll show you what views I can see from here. I don't know if it'll be much, but let's have a look. It is quite cloudy up here, so there's not a great deal to see. And we're now looking over to the central Brecon Beacons. You can see there's a nice dusting of snow there, but we can't see any detail really just because of the low cloud. The good thing about the temperature dropping in the night is that the snow is a bit easier to walk on because it's more crunchy than slippery. Although there is a lot of ice around now, so I'm having to watch out for that as well. Well, I think because the visibility is so poor, I can't show you much more, so I'll end the video here. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope maybe you've learned some things from the things that I've learned on this trip as well. Please give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more of what I get up to, please consider subscribing. That really supports me as well. And I'll see you on the next one.